Why don't you give me a sign? Like the sea that leaves a trail along that shore It's not your problem, it's mine Everybody thinks that I'm okay Sometimes I think I am too I'm on the outside looking in I'm waiting for the shockwaves to begin Oh, won't you let me hold you for one time Just a rainy day In a London cafe A London cafe Hello, I'm Sophia Jessica and welcome to the Fan Carpet. We are here with Faith Elizabeth and if you could tell us about your movie here today. Of course, thank you for having me. Um, so we have a film called My Baby Cries today. I was the writer, director, producer and lead actress of the film. Um, it's a tragic story about uh, a couple who are isolated in their despair and they're struggling to communicate. Um, and they're struggling to connect on a subject which has traumatised the pair of them because they've had, uh, spoilers, <laughs> they've had a miscarriage unfortunately and so um, they've found themselves coming apart and not communicating and not being able to talk to each other about it. And um, what uh, would you say were, you know, maybe challenges or memorable moments while filming or editing for you? Um, it was a very heavy film uh, to make. <laughs> I suffered a miscarriage when I was 21 years old and then 10 years later my sister and my best friend both miscarried in the same week and basically suddenly all these feelings that I've been having when I miscarried myself came flooding back and I realised that the grief was really universal and that nothing had really changed very much in terms of the taboo topic of miscarriage and also in terms of people not really knowing what to say or how to help you and it was just a real shock to me that even I didn't really know what to say or how to help them and I just realised that it was a really important thing that needed to be talked about. The most difficult day for me was the day that we filmed the final nursery scene. Spoilers. Um, <laughs> I was completely wet because she'd been having a bath and she'd been having difficulties with um, acceptance. Yeah, acceptance. So she'd had a bath and so she'd gotten out of the bath and gone straight to get the baby and so she was dripping wet. Um, sat filming the scene, I was actually sat with the props around me, which I had done all the props for the film, and there was my baby who died's actual baby scan next to me, um, there were pregnancy tests which I took when I miscarried next to me, um, basically looking around there were all these memories of what had really happened to me, sat to dress the scene and to help enhance the scene and I took the baby and we were shooting this particular part and I did break down crying <laughs> um, and the tears that you see are real tears and we shot, the cameraman wasn't sure what to do because I was directing and acting, nobody really knew what to do and we just kept rolling um, and then eventually I just said, can you, can you stop, can you stop? So he put the camera down and left, uh, left the room and I then had a real moment of crying with uh, my actor Oliver Anstey and um, yeah it was like a really cathartic moment for me but it was also really difficult because I had been acting and then suddenly real feelings were coming back to me. Did, would you say that that particular moment, uh, as well as it being difficult, would you say it was almost like healing in a way or releasing? Yeah, it did feel that way. I mean, I hadn't cried. I cried a lot when I was writing the script because it did bring back a lot of feelings, but I hadn't cried that way for a long time. 
Um, and I think when you lose a baby, it always stays with you. They were always a baby that was yours. It was always a life that was lost. It was someone that you loved and years can go by and it still hurts. It hurts in a different way, but sat there holding the baby and in that situation, it, it did feel like a release afterwards that it was kind of the, like that grief kind of reappearing in a different way. And were you happy with people's responses uh, to your film um, at the screening tonight? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, every time we screen the film, so many people come up to me and say that they've had a similar experience or they've been through it or someone they know has been through it. And I think because miscarriage and baby loss does affect one in four pregnancies, it is such a high amount of people that go through it that it is a shared grief in many ways. And even if you haven't had it yourself, often you've known someone who has. So again, it's a shared grief. So I feel like it's really good to be able to have those conversations. I mean, people are like running up to me to say, I've been through this, thank you for talking about this, thank you for telling this story. Um, so it always feels good for me to be able to help others in that way. Absolutely, and um, it, is, it is an important uh, message to pass on that they're not alone and uh, there, there is, I think you also mentioned there's a support um, yeah. in, in you and the team where people can come to you and talk about it basically, which yeah. I think is really lovely. Um, but is there anything else that you'd like to tell like the audience about uh, the making of, of the film or backstory or maybe where you're hoping to put it out in public? Yeah, so, um, well, one of the main things that we talk about is the fact that Mama Academy, who are a UK charity, have actually um, been supporting the film. Um, they basically help uh, educate mums and midwives about pregnancy to try and help prevent uh, miscarriage and baby loss where possible. Obviously, it's something that's really difficult and there's not much research being done into it, um, but there are some things that they can tell people and some things that they can educate people with to help them understand more about their pregnancy. And especially encouraging them that the support is there and if they're feeling anxious and they're feeling like there's something that's not right, that it's perfectly okay and acceptable and you really must go and speak to someone about it because I think sometimes mums have an instinct that something's not right but they feel like that they're not um, they're qualified to, to yeah know. they sometimes feel like they don't know if they should say anything because they don't want to be a fuss and actually you know going and speaking to someone even if they say everything's fine um, is reassuring for you and your partner but it's also you know making sure that if there is something that's going on they might be able to catch it early and so we work with Mama Academy and basically we're trying to encourage people if they've got questions or they need help and support to go and have a look at their website um, and also if they want to give any money they're a very small charity in the UK that's run by parents who've all experienced stillbirth themselves and so um, they're always needing more money and more support so anything that you can do to help them they run like charity runs and stuff but because they're such a small charity run by parents and they don't get the recognition and the support that they really need so it's important that you know, wherever possible we can try and help support that charity. And what's the website, sorry, for...? Um... Uh, I don't know the website, actually. It's just called Mama Academy. Mama Academy. Yeah, Mama Academy. It's a bit dirty, it's my lanyard I've been wearing at all the festivals. <laughs> oh, no, it's, it's all good. Um, and lastly, um, because it was your first, uh, it was your directorial yeah. debut, how did you find directing instead of acting and writing? It's a different game. It's, it, do you know what? I feel very at home directing. I feel like in acting I've been directing myself for a long time and then in this I was acting as well so I feel like I was um, still self-directing a little bit but I had more control over the story and the camera. Um, but I love directing Oliver as well and um, I've just directed my second short film called Granny DJ which is part of a horror anthology. Um, it's called Virus Detected, so that will go out and be distributed as a feature film. And that, for me, was another interesting story because it was touching on um, cancer and uh, loss in a different way. Um, but again, something that was very close to me because my mum died recently of terminal cancer. So this story is like a horror comedy, so it's a very different type of story. Um, but it still has quite a heavy message and it's got quite a strong heart to it but 
you know, told in a different way for a different type of audience. And I hope that My Baby Cries, we plan to turn it into a feature, although not the same story. We're going to do exploring similar themes, but move into a different type of um, story. But yeah, we're hoping to make it into a feature called Lost Bunny and explore basically reaching more people through our message in that way. Thank you for watching The Fan Carpet. Please follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram for more content next time. I'm here on the largest of the Balearic Islands, Mallorca, with the turquoise waters of the Mediterranean Sea, beautiful mountainous landscape, the thriving city of Palma, quaint little market towns, a growing number of luxury hotels. It's no surprise that the likes of Audrey Hepburn and Elizabeth Taylor like to holiday here. So come and join me as I take you around Mallorca. Thank you for watching the fan carpet. If you like this video, be sure to click that thumbs up button at the bottom of your screen. And also be sure to subscribe to the fan carpet YouTube channels. They're absolutely free. That's so much fun too. Be sure to check out the official website, thefancarpet.com. Also, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stay up to date with reviews, competitions, the latest news, and so much more.